Why are you here? Uh, for the planet. For the planet? Yes. Are you concerned with climate change? Uh, yes, definitely. It's um, a huge problem <laughs> in our world that nobody really cares about. Uh, today I'm here because I feel passionately about the climate change issue, the impending uh -huh. disaster that we are headed towards if we don't actually take drastic and in this immediate action uh, mm -hmm. to actually combat it. Uh, and one of the reasons that I'm here is to actually promote the 100% Clean Petition, uh, which is an initiative which is being, which we're trying to get signed by absolutely every person on Earth, uh -huh. um, to insist that global economies transition from being reliant on energy systems which are dependent on fossil fuels mm -hmm. and become 100% reliant on renewable energy. And you think that's an objective that's doable in, in a, what kind of time frame? Well, our, our hope is that we can transition by 2050. 2050. To be honest, if we could get it done any faster than that, that's obviously ideal. <laughs> if we get it done yesterday, brilliant. Um, but the reality is, of course, we're dealing with politicians, we're dealing with policymakers, and we're dealing with bureaucracy. So on a global scale, nothing's going to happen that fast. You feel um, angry and concerned with, uh, with, um, with stakeholders that are not seemingly taking this serious, mm. uh, not taking this into consideration when making political decisions. Mm. <clears throat> you feel that is very, that, that is not a responsible way of uh, mm. running a, a, an economy and a country. So mm. that's of course both concern and anger. Mm. Um, but you also feel, I also feel cautiously optimistic because people uh, on the grassroots level are getting more and more engaged. I think a lot can be done first by uh, stopping subsidies to fossil fuels, creating uh, renewable energy, uh, uh, researching more into renewable energy, investing in renewable energy. Is climate change taught? Uh, is it a taught uh, subject? Not really, because the te our teachers don't really care at all. Even your geography teacher? Um, our geography teachers do care. Like, okay. and, and so do you feel that people are aware of climate change or not? In Hong Kong, yeah. I really don't think lots of people really care about it. You don't care? Why don't they care? I mean, it's a materialistic world. Well, it's a materialistic city. If they get money, they don't really care about anything else. Can we can we solve climate change with money? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's no there's no business uh, without uh, environment consideration or uh, climate change consideration. Yeah. So uh, they might deny it yet, still now. But I mean, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah, so, but it, it's up to us also to demand for it. Yes. As, uh, as individuals and as uh, consumers and as uh, citizens, uh, we, uh, we have to move uh, and ask New for it. The framework of everything we do, education, business, whatever we do, should be environment. Mm. It's not, it's not a, an option, mm. it's where we live. So are you aware you are also taking pictures of the climate march? I was today. Why, why, is, why is that? I was covering it for Coconuts Hong Kong. Coconuts Hong Kong? What? And, uh, it's an online news and entertainment website. Mm -hmm. And since I thought this was an important event, that I would cover it so that readers can learn about it. Because so often, people don't hear about rallies till after, right? Yes. So, unfortunately. But, um, so, at least you can have an impact after by documenting it, showing people that other people care enough to get out of bed on Sunday. Was it, was it an important event? Um, I think it's important in that Hong Kong shows it's part of this international movement mm -hmm. and that people care. I think it's cool that young kids show up. You don't usually see that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel that you can have an impact on climate yourself? Well, um, if I can participate in protests to convince people that it's um, a problematic situation, then I think that can help the world. Really can help. Yeah. Everything that I've learned of human nature is that we are very much, we'll wait and see. Uh -huh. we, don't, we don't act until there is an, uh, there's an immediate threat. I mean, it's, it's, it's the exact example of, you know, like every time there's a, a war, we mm -hmm. make terrific innovations in how we kill each other, or, and then that gets evolved and developed into something that's economically and environmentally sustainable. Mm -hmm. you know, there's always a way of evolving that but it's always under great duress that our greatest innovations come about. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the way that humans are programmed is, is to, you know, sort Just of react. mire and wallow and complain until we actually realize that we have no other option. We have to act. And that's the case now? Completely. Yeah, we are living in a, in a butterfly effect situation. 
which means that we can make big changes, but make a big difference now. So now is the time to do it. Carpe diem, seize the day. Uh, no snowflake in the avalanche ever feels responsible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's the idea that each and every incremental action that's taken by each and every single individual person on Earth mm. does actually add up. You may feel that you're, you're, one, you're one drop in the ocean, but that mm -hmm. one drop in the ocean does have that uh, ability Impact. to change the world. So, what, what do you believe this kind of protest can do? It can galvanize people. It can bring, bring people together mm -hmm. so they know they're not alone and unity is strength. Mm. And you have a message for the other uh, demonstrators around the world for today? Uh, yeah, uh, solidarity from Hong Kong. <laughs> Thank you very much.